great pleasure for me to speak in this uh, seminar. Uh, so my talk uh, is about uh, stable determination of the Riemannian matrix matrix uh, from the boundary measurements. Uh, my talk is devoted to the following inverse problem. I will consider a Riemannian manifold. Then uh, we uh, determine the metric uh, uniquely uh, by the boundary measurements or the corresponding Dirichlet Riemann map. So let me start with uh, the outline of uh, my talk. At first, I will give some introduction. I will discuss the well posedness of the direct problem. Uh, then I will define the Dirichlet Riemann map and I will state the inverse problem. Uh, second, I will introduce uh, a class of uh, metrics in which we can solve our inverse problem. Uh, after that, I will construct a special solution to the wave equation by the geometrical optics uh, method. And finally, I will give some idea for the uniqueness and stability for the inverse problem with partial data. Okay, let me uh, uh, start with a precise description of the problem. Then I consider omega bounded domain connected uh, of Rn and at least equal to with a smooth boundary gamma. And we assume that omega is equipped with a metric G with coefficient GGK is uh, uh, smooth or smooth and uh, symmetric. Then we can define the Laplace uh, operator corresponding to the metric G by this uh, uh, expression here, the absolute value of G is the determinant of the metric G, and GGK is the inverse of the matrix uh, G. Uh, of course, if you consider G equal identity, uh, then here we have exactly the Laplace operator in Rn. So we consider the hyperbolic initial boundary value problem for the wave equation in a cylindrical domain, Q is zero capital T times omega. So u is a solution to the wave equation, dt squared minus Laplace nu equal to zero in q. Of course, here we deal with the uh, evolution equation, then we need to add uh, initial data here u and uh, the time derivative of u equal to zero in omega and u equal f in this lateral surface sigma is zero capital T times the boundary gamma. Then it is well known that but if you consider F, the boundary condition in H11 sigma, this space is roughly speaking is the set of the function which H1 in both variable T and X and which satisfy some compatibility condition with initial data. So if, uh, if we take F in this uh, space, our system admits unique solution U, which in this class of uh, function and by the multiplier method, we can prove that the normal derivative of the solution can be estimated or controlled by the norm of the boundary condition F. Therefore, we may define the dirichlet Neumann map as following. For any voltage F, for any boundary condition F, then we solve the system, then we have unique solution, then we consider the normal derivative of the solution measured in the boundary sigma or the flux of the solution measured in sigma. Uh, of course, uh, the, the dirichlet Neumann map is linear. And thanks to this uh, inequality, the dirichlet Neumann map is a bounded operator from H11 to H2. So an inverse problem in this setting is whether we can recover the metric G from the dirichlet Neumann map. So the very famous hyperbolic inverse problem with the global data, does the dirichlet Neumann map or the graph of the dirichlet Neumann map determine uniquely the metric? Of course, the first question for the inverse problem is the uniqueness of the metric, which equivalent in our case to the injectivity of the map G to lambda G. Uh, the unique determination of the metric G is uh, hopeless since the dirichlet Neumann map is invariant under some gauge transformation. For example, if you consider any diffeomorphism psi from omega into itself, which fixes the boundary, then the restriction of the psi in gamma equal to identity, 
then we can prove that the Dirichlet Tunnelman map corresponding to the pullback of the metric G coincide with the, the Dirichlet Tunnelman map corresponding to the metric G. The pullback of the metric G is a new metric in omega, which is given by this, by this expression. So here there are some uh, non uniqueness which manifested by this identity. And then uh, we need uh, to re reformulate our inverse problem modulo the gauge invariance. And the right question of, for the uniqueness for the inverse hyperbolic inverse problem with global data can be stated as following Does the Dirichlet Tunnelman map determine the metric G up to onisomity? Okay. Uh, the uniqueness uh, of this kind of inverse problem uh, goes back uh, to 40 years ago by Billy Shev and Kuriyev by using the boundary control method. In fact, the, pan the boundary control method uh, released a unique continuation property for the wave equation, proved by uh, Tataru, and control uh, theory. Uh, but this method is not well suited to get any explicit stability estimates. So in my talk, uh, we are interested in a method which will provide some stability estimates. So we need to find some function theta, positive function theta, such that we have this stability estimate. So if you have two Dirichlet Tunnelman maps, maps are close in appropriate norm, uh, how close are the Riemannian metric up to inisometry? Of course, here we need theta of zero to zero to guarantee the uniqueness. So the, the problem of uh, uh, establishing stability estimate in determination of the metric in the wave equation was studied extensively. And the major contribution are given by uh, Stefanov and uh, Olma. But in my talk, I will interested in the determination of the metric by uh, partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map, not the global Dirichlet Tunnelman map. For example, if you assume that we have access only in a small portion of the boundary, gamma sharp, then we can define the partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map as following. So we consider any boundary condition F, then we have unique solution, then we measure the, the flux of the solution only in the part sigma sharp. Sigma sharp is gamma sharp times zero t. This is, is the partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map. Uh, uh, so here we are interested in a stability with uh, this uh, uh, Dirichlet Tunnelman map or partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map. And in this setting, the inverse problem, hyperbolic inverse problem with partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map can be stated as following. Does this operator, the partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map, determine stably the metric G up to inisomity? Of course, here, uh, there is a price to pay. So we need to impose many restrictions uh, in the matrix G to solve this problem. Uh, here, I will give you a, a short list of the major contribution on this topic. The first paper for the uniqueness is given by uh, Billy Shell by using the boundary control method. Here, there are many other uh, results. And uh, for the partial Dirichlet Tunnelman map, uh, we can uh, cite the paper by Lassas and Oxanen by using the boundary control method, method but just to prove the, the uniqueness. Uh, an interesting related inverse problem to our problem is to determine the metric G by the knowledge of the geodesic joining X and Y for, L, for any X and Y in the boundary, which called the boundary rigidity problem. So the boundary rigidity problem is, uh, is the following. Uh, we assume that we know the geodesical distance between any two points, x and y, in the boundary. Then the problem is to determine the metric G uh, from this distance. The geodesical distance is the minimum of uh, the length of any curves joining x and y. So the boundary rigidity problem is the following. Does the restriction of the geodesical distance and the boundary determine uniquely the metric G up to unisomity. Here we can observe that we have exactly the same abstraction to the uniqueness. In fact, we can prove that the geodesical distance corresponding to the metric G coincide with 
the jeu des écoles distance corresponding to the pullback of the metric sheet. So this problem is sometimes called the autograph problem, which arises in geophysics in order to determine the inner structure of the Earth, measuring the travel times of uh, seismic waves. The second problem, which uh, is related to our inverse problem, is lens rigidity, uh, which concerns the determination of the metric G uh, from some from information about its geodesic flow. Uh, for example, uh, if you consider x any points in the boundary and uh, any unit uh, vector psi, then we consider the geodesic starting from x in the direction psi. This uh, geodesic uh, reached the boundary in second time in uh, point uh, y in, in direction eta. Uh, then two plus is uh, the travel time, is the arc length of this geodesic. And uh, the scattering relation, <coughs> capital SG, uh, is uh, the peer y and eta. So the peer of uh, the travel time to plus and uh, the scattering relation is called the lens type. And a very famous uh, uh, geometric inverse problem is, uh, is the following. Does the lens data of the peer of the travel time and the scattering relation determine the metric G up to anisometry? Here we have exactly the same uh, obstruction to the uniqueness for the inverse problem. So if you have uh, two metrics with the same lens data, then we can prove that the metric G1 and G2 uh, are isometric. OK, uh, let me uh, give you uh, now the global strategy of uh, the proof of the uniqueness in our inverse problem. So at first, we need to relate the boundary information included in the Dirichlet Tournament map, lambda G, it's the information what uh, we have, with the metric G inside the domain omega. For the moment, assume that we have two solutions, U1 and U2. U1 is a solution to the forward wave equation with the metric G1, then initial data equal to zero, and the boundary condition F1. And consider U2 is a solution to, to the forward wave equation with the metric G2 and the final data equal to zero and the boundary condition F2. Here, F1 and F2 are given functions. So if uh, we consider one of them, we multiply it by the solution of the second system by integration by part and the formula, uh, green formula, we can find this uh, identity, the orthogonal identity. So we can prove that this boundary integral in sigma equals this interior integral in Q, cylindrical, cylindrical domain Q. So here we have the difference between the Dirichlet tournament map or the measure of the solution. And here we have some interior integral with uh, functions d and s prime. Uh, and d and s prime can be expressed by the difference of the matrix g1 and g2. So d is c minus 1, c is given by this function. And S prime is a, a tensor with coefficient can be expressed by the difference between G1 and G2 or the inverse of the matrix G1 and G2. So this is very important identity because it's release the boundary information with what we hope to, to identify G1 minus G2. Then using this uh, orthogonal identity, we can devise the proof in four steps. In the first step, we need to uh, prove some relation between the, Dirichlet, the partial Dirichlet Tournament map and the global Dirichlet Tournament map. Since in this identity, we have the global, the difference between the global Dirichlet Tournament map. Then uh, this uh, kind of uh, estimate uh, the wave equation by using the FBI transform. I will give uh, more details uh, for this uh, step uh, later. In uh, the second step, we will construct two diffeomorphisms, psi 1 and psi 2. 
such that the pullback of the initial matrix G1 and G2 takes this, this special form. Uh, uh, then this is like a variable change. Then we need to prove or to construct some diffeomorphism such that the pulled back matrix by Psi1 and Psi2 uh, uh, takes these forms. Moreover, the transformed domains uh, of omega by the, the, the function Psi1 and Psi1 minus 1 and Psi2 minus 1 is the same. And the diffeomorphism Psi fixes the boundary. Then its restriction in the boundary equals the identity. So in the other words, if you do not omega 1 tilde and omega 2 tilde, the transformed domain of omega by Psi1 minus 1 and Psi2 minus 1, then omega 1 tilde must be equal to omega 2 uh, tilde. Now, we consider the new matrix by the change uh, of variable, uh, Psi star, and the new domain, omega star, which uh, equal omega 1 tilde equal om omega 2 tilde. And we will denote by uh, abuse of notation the new matrix by GL and the new domain by omega. So here, G tilde is G and omega star is omega. In the third step, using this notation, we will construct a family of a special solution to the forward wave equation and the backward wave equation, which depends in a large parameter lambda. Uh, of course, here, the uh, forward wave equation with the metric G1 and the backward wave equation with the metric G2. So the final step is the conclusion. So if you assume that we have the same partial Dirichlet Tournament map, for example, for the uniqueness, then by the first step, we have the same global Dirichlet Tournament map. Then if you have this quantity equal to zero, then this integral equal to zero. So we apply the orthogonal identity to our constructed family of solution, which depend in lambda, and from this integral, uh, we need to extract uh, some information uh, of the symmetric tensor S, which, uh, which is the difference between G1 and G2. This will be done by the X-ray transform of the symmetric tensor S. OK, this is uh, the global strategy of the proof. Now I will give you some details for the proof of the first step. The first step is to prove some relation between the partial Dirichlet Tournament map and the global Dirichlet Tournament map. So uh, assume that we have two metrics, G1 and G2. Then I uh, consider the following uh, initial boundary value problems. The first one is the wave equation with the metric G1, initial data equal to 0, and the boundary condition equal F. F is given. V2 is a solution to the wave equation, but with the metric G2, initial data equal to 0, and with the same boundary condition f. Here, the same function f. Then, if you consider v equal v1 minus v2, then we can uh, verify that uh, v solves the wave equation with the source term. Capital F here is the difference between the two Laplace operator corresponding to the metric G1 and G2, respectively. And the initial data equal to 0 and the boundary condition equal to 0. So our goal here, if you consider any portion of the boundary, gamma sharp in the boundary gamma, we need to find some function mu, positive function mu, such that we have this kind of stability estimate for the uh, uh, Cauchy problem. So we need to estimate the normal derivative of the solution in the all boundary sigma with the Cauchy data or the hyperbolic Cauchy data. So here, capital F is the source. And here, the normal derivative only in the part sigma sharp. So this inequality in terms of the Dirichlet Tournament maps can be written as following. The normal derivative of V is exactly the difference between the global Dirichlet Tournament map, lambda G1 minus lambda G2. And F is the source term. And then we keep this term. 
And the normal derivative in sigma sharp is exactly the difference between the partial Dirichlet Tonnemann map in sigma sharp. In fact, this kind of, uh, of uh, stability estimate for the Cauchy problem depends in, uh, in the shape of the gamma sharp. So if you consider gamma sharp is sufficiently large, then we can prove some other stability uh, for, uh, for the uh, Cauchy problems. Uh, this assumption for the largest of uh, gamma sharp is needed for the Lopatinsky condition uh, for the hyperbolic abnormal statements. But in my talk, I uh, am interested only in sigma sharp is any arbitrary part of the boundary, not necessarily large. So here we will apply a new method which used by uh, Robiano, uh, which is the FBI transform, Fourier Bros Eaglonitzer uh, transform, to change the problem near the boundary into a problem for which elliptic Carloman estimate can be applied. And then for the elliptic Carloman estimate, we not need uh, the Lopatinsky condition, or the Lopatinsky condition can be relaxed. So the FBI, I define the FBI transform or the Bergman transform as, uh, as following, is just uh, some convolution, integral convolution with Gaussian function with the large parameter gamma. So the FBI transform of V is this integral, is integral of this con Gaussian multiplied by V. Here Z is complex, Z is S minus IT. So we can uh, verify immediately that the FBI transform of the time derivative of V is I dS, the FBI transform of V. Then if you apply the FBI transform to, to the wave equation, we can get an elliptic operator applied to the FBI transform. Then here we can transform the hyperbolic operator to an elliptic one. Here the variable is t and x, here the variable is s and x. So if you consider any arbitrary open set of the boundary gamma sharp, and if you, if you consider any number wood O of the boundary, we can apply the elliptic stability estimate for the Cauchy problem. Then we can estimate the normal derivative of the solution in the all boundary sigma by the elliptic Cauchy data. Here, the elliptic Cauchy data is the source term, is the FBI transform of capital F, and the normal derivative of the solution only in sigma sharp. Sigma sharp is an arbitrary open set. Uh, OK. Uh, now, we need to uh, uh, prove the estimate for the, our initial function. Here, this estimate is the FBI is the estimate for the FBI transform of V. So, but we need some estimate for V itself. So by the definition of the FBI transform, we can immediately prove that the elliptic Cauchy data can be estimated, estimated by the hyperbolic Cauchy data multiply exponential gamma, very large parameter, exponential gamma. Moreover, we can prove that for T equal to zero, the normal derivative of the FBI transform Converge to the normal derivative of V itself with uh, an explicit uh, decay rate, one over gamma. Finally, we apply the Cauchy integral formula. We can prove that the normal derivative of the solution can be estimated by this term, C over gamma, the norm of V in H2, plus this term, exponential gamma the norm of the source term or the hyperbolic uh, Cauchy data, the source term F and the normal derivative of the V in sigma sharp. So uh, here we have some balances. Here we have a small term in gamma, but here we have a large term in gamma with respect to gamma. So this inequality with uh, in terms of uh, Dirichlet Tonnemann map can be a reads. Uh, the normal derivative of V is uh, the difference between the global Dirichlet Tonnemann map. So we keep this term and uh, the source term capital F is the difference between the Laplace operator corresponding to G1 and G2. 
So if you assume that, for example, G1 equals G2 near the boundary in the number of O, then this term disappears and we have the global or the difference between the global Dirichlet Tournament map can be estimated by this term plus exponential gamma, the differences, the difference between the Dirichlet Tournament map. Then, for example, for the uniqueness, if you assume that we have the same partial Dirichlet Tournament map, then this term disappears and we take gamma equal plus infinity, then we prove that we have the same global Dirichlet Tournament map. Then we have lambda gamma one equal lambda gamma two. Uh, lambda G1 equal lambda G2, sorry. For the stability, then this term uh, not necessarily equal to zero, then uh, we can minimize this function with respect to gamma, and we can prove some logarithmic stability uh, between the global Dirichlet Tournament map and the partial Dirichlet Tournament map. It's okay for... Uh... Oh. Okay. Uh, let me uh, uh, move in uh, to introduce the admissible manifold. So in the construction, which is the, our third step in the construction uh, of the special solution, we need to solve some equal equation. So we need to find some function psi such that the norm of uh, the gradient of psi equal one. This is the gradient with respect of uh, the metric G. G is G1 or G2. Uh, so to, uh, to have a well-defined solution, it is convenient to work in geometry where no uh, caustics occur. So uh, we, we uh, consider a Riemannian manifold, omega G. So omega G is said to be simple. If the boundary is strictly convex, and if the exponential map is a global diffeomorphism. Of course, the exponential map is already a local diffeomorphism, but here we need that the uh, exponential map is global diffeomorphism. Uh, so the advantage to work in uh, this kind of uh, simple matrix is that the cat locus for any points is empty. Roughly speaking, the cat locus for any point Z is the set of the other points which can be related with Z by many geodesics. So this set of cat locus is fundamental in the analysis uh, of manifolds, since the geodesical distance is smooth outside this set. Moreover, if you consider any uh, metric G which uh, close enough to the Euclidean one in CK topology, then G is simple. Then the exponential map is a global diffeomorphism in omega. Uh, we need also in uh, our proof to construct some uh, change of coordinates or uh, two diffeomorphism such that the pullback of uh, the initial matrix G1 and G2 satisfies some conditions. So if you consider any metric G uh, be a simple, uh, then we can prove that there exists a diffeomorphism psi from omega in other domain psi of omega, such that the pullback of the metric G has the following special form. Then G tilde, G tilde is the pullback of the metric G by the diffeomorphism psi, satisfy this condition. Now, if you consider two uh, matrix G1 and G2, and you consider the two diffeomorphisms C1 and Psi2 related to the, this uh, metric, then uh, uh, G1 tilde and G2 tilde satisfy this special form. Now, if you assume that, moreover, we have the same global Dirichlet Tournament map, we can prove that the transformed domains omega of omega by the maps Psi1 minus one and Psi2 minus one is the same. In the other words, if you consider omega one tilde and omega two tilde be the transformed domains of omega under the maps Psi1 minus one and Psi2 minus one, then we have omega one tilde equal omega two tilde. But in our case, we have not this condition. For the stability, for example, we have not necessarily 
the, the same Dirichlet Neumann map, but the difference is small. So uh, we need to add it, uh, other conditions to the metric in order to guarantee that uh, we have this, uh, this uh, property. This is uh, very important to the proof, the, the result. Uh, so this uh, additional uh, assumption uh, is about the geodesic flow or the lens data of the corresponding uh, matrix G1 and G2. At first, we consider the geodesic flow corresponding to the matrix G by the classical way. Then the geodesical flow is uh, the pair of uh, the geodesic gamma and the derivative of the geodesic gamma starting from X in the direction Psi. Here is uh, the time interval of the existence of this uh, geodesic. Then um, uh, we introduce uh, this uh, two sets uh, of the inner and outer vectors of S omega. S omega uh, is the unit sphere of the tangent bundle. Uh, then we define the length, the arc length, or the scattering relation by uh, this uh, function. So, 2 plus is the travel time for the geodesic uh, from two points in the boundary. And uh, the scattering relation uh, is uh, just the, uh, the geodesic flow at uh, 2 plus. 2 plus is the travel time. And the peer 2 plus and the scattering relation is the length data. So let me uh, define the set of uh, our admissible matrix. Then I define uh, the part of the boundary gamma plus uh, as following. We fix any unit vector, uh, EN. Then gamma plus is the set of the boundary points such that we have the scalar, the product scalar between the normal and EN uh, negative. Then given K and M0 epsilon, we say that a pair of matrix G1 and G2 is say K admissible if uh, GL is a bounded L equal one and two, GL equals the Euclidean one near the boundary. GL is uh, uh, sufficient uh, uh, small. And uh, we have this lens condition. So we need that the lens data corresponding to the metric G1 coincide the, with the, the, the lens data corresponding to the metric G2 for any X in gamma plus in the direction AN. So uh, if you have G1 and G2 satisfy this condition, we say that this is admissible uh, pair of uh, uh, metrics. Uh, then I can state uh, our main result for any, uh, sorry, there exists K and uh, epsilon and uh, two parameter alpha beta such that we have this stability estimate for the inverse problem. So here we estimate the difference between uh, two metrics uh, with respect to the pullback by the difference between the partial Dirichlet Neumann map. Here, theta is a log logarithmic function. Of course, stability estimate guarantee the uniqueness. So if you have the same partial Dirichlet Neumann map, lambda G1 equal lambda G2, then G1 equal G2 modulo uh, the diffeomorphism psi. OK, uh, then uh, how to construct the coordinates change or the diffeomorphism psi? Uh, let's consider G, which equals the Euclidean one near the boundary. Then we extend the G outside the domain omega, such that G is close enough to the Euclidean one. Then we consider the Hamiltonian system corresponding to the Hamiltonian function, this Hamiltonian function. Then X dot, or the derivative of X with respect to the variable S, equal this term. This is a classical Hamiltonian system. So by uh, this condition of uh, smallness of G, we can prove that we have a global solution of this Hamiltonian system, which is a pair of X and Xi. Of course, the solution depends uh, in G, the metric, 
and the parameters. Then we can introduce uh, new coordinates, y equals zs, uh, by the map capital Psi from omega tilde, which is the inverse, uh, say, minus 1 of omega. Then we consider just the first component of the solution of the Hamiltonian system. So by uh, our assumption for the, 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 that G is close to Euclidean 1, then we can prove that uh, Psi is a diffeomorphism. And we can also prove that the pullback of the metric G by this uh, diffeomorphism satisfy the, uh, the special form or the uh, normal coordinates uh, special form. Now we consider peer, a pair of uh, admissible metrics, G1 and G2. Then we have two uh, diffeomorphisms, Psi1 and Psi2, uh, which uh, satisfy this special form. Uh, and uh, thanks to the lens data, we can prove that the transformed domains of omega by uh, the maps psi1 minus 1 and psi2 minus 1 is the same. That is g1 tilde equal g2 tilde equal, uh, sorry, omega1 tilde equal omega2 tilde equal omega star. Okay, now by the abuse of notation, we will denote the new matrix, which is the pullback of the matrix G L by G and the new domain omega star by omega and the new uh, number of the boundary O star by O. So we summarize the properties of G1 and G2 with uh, the new notation, then G satisfies some special form, uh, G1 equal G2 near the boundary and the metric G1 or G2 are close enough to the Euclidean one in CK minus two topology. Uh, now I will move in the geodesic X-ray transform. So in the study of uh, problem of recovering of uh, Riemannian matrix from the dirichlet tonemann maps, uh, a new type of problem of integral geometry appears, the geodesic X-ray transform. So the ray transform the, of symmetric tensor can be defined as following. So the X-ray transform of the symmetric tensor is the integral of the tensor S along the geodesic starting from x in the direction x. And our inverse problem is related to the following tomography inverse problem. We need to recover the tensor S, the symmetric tensor S, from the geodesic X-ray transform Xg of S. Uh, how many time, uh, Nabil? Alors, uh... I need uh... 15 minutes. Okay, nice. Okay, then our inverse problem is uh, very close or uh, related to this uh, linear inverse problem. This is, is exactly the, the X-ray transform or the geodesic ray transform inverse problem or tomography inverse problem is the linearization of uh, our inverse problem. So uh, here we can observe that we, are, we have an abstraction to the uniqueness, since the X-ray transform is not injective. For example, we can prove that the X-ray transform for any uh, symmetric gradient of uh, V for any vector field V equal to zero. The symmetric gradient, the symmetric gradient of V is uh, given by this expression. So then, uh, the, the kernel of this uh, transformation, X-ray transform, not trivial. Moreover, we can prove that uh, for any uh, symmetric tensor S can be to decomposed in two parts, solenoidal parts plus potential parts. So the solenoidal parts, which satisfy that the, the co-derivative of this part equal to zero, and the potential part is given by the symmetric gradient of uh, a vector field V with V in H10 of omega. So the more precise formulation of the linearized inverse problem is, uh, can be stated as following. Does XJS equal to zero 
imply only the solenoidal particle is zero. Of course, we know that the X-ray transform, the X-ray transform of uh, the symmetric gradient of V is already equal to zero. So this property is called uh, the S injectivity of the X-ray transform. And there are many uh, works which, in which we can find some uh, conditions in the metric G such that uh, the X-ray transform is S injective. Uh, so, uh, in uh, our uh, assumption, if you assume that G is close enough to the Euclidean one in CK topology, then we can guarantee the S injectivity of the X-ray transform. Moreover, if you consider this uh, operator, the normal operator, which is uh, the adjoint X-ray transform composable with the X-ray transform, we can prove some properties uh, for this operator, uh, which given by uh, Stefanov and Ulma. Okay, let me now uh, move to the final step uh, for the proof. Uh, so in the final step, we need uh, to uh, construct uh, some special solution to our uh, equation. Uh, so uh, we are looking for solution for the wave equation uh, of this form. So here, uh, a is amplitude, psi here, small psi is a phase function, and here we have some correction term or small term, remainder term. So in order to construct a solution to the wave equation in this form, we apply the wave operator in the principal part, the amplitude and uh, in this function, then we compute and we consider the terms with respect uh, the power of lambda. Then here we have the first term, multiply lambda square, second term, multiply lambda, and third term, multiply one, constant. So in order to guarantee the existence of this uh, small term, we need to eliminate uh, these two terms. So we need to uh, construct psi such that this term equal to zero. 1 minus, minus uh, the norm of the gradient psi equals 0. This is, is the econal equation. And we need to construct also the amplitude A such that the transport equation equals 0. So in order to construct the psi, we use that we, 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 uh, we work in the uh, simple manifold. So for the simple manifold, it is enough to consider psi is the geodesical distance between x and z for any z fixed outside omega. Then we can, we can verify that psi satisfy the, satisfies the econal equation. For the transport equation, uh, we take the polar coordinates. This is the uh, uh, transport equation. Then we need to, uh, to find A, which satisfies this equation. Then in uh, polar coordinates, this complicated uh, equation can be written in uh, a more simple uh, one. Then in polar coordinates, R is uh, the distance, T is the time, and this equation can be transformed in this one. And to solve this equation, here we have only two variables, T and R, uh, we can consider A equal any cutoff function chi with one variable, multiply the determinant of the metric G uh, power minus one uh, over half, over four, sorry. And we multiply it by any function which depend only on the angular variable Xi. Z here is a fixed point outside omega. So if you consider A in this form, then A satisfies this, uh, this uh, transport equation. Okay, now in, uh, in order to, correct, to construct the correction term, uh, it is enough to consider V a solution to the wave equation with uh, this third term. A is a solution of the transport equation with initial data at zero and the boundary condition vanishes. So here we just apply the energy estimate, the classical energy estimate for the wave equation. Then we can prove that the L2 norm of uh, this solution V is a small 
with respect lambda in L2 norm. So we have lambda multiplied the L2 norm of this condition is a bounded. So the norm L2 is a small uh, with respect lambda, and the norm of the gradient is a bounded uh, with respect lambda. So uh, our solution with G equal G1 look like U1 equal the principal term. This is, is the amplitude. This is, is the, the phase function plus some correction or remainder term, which is small with respect to lambda in L2 norm. Uh, suppose now uh, we have uh, two admissible metrics, G1 and G2. Uh, and we assume that the difference of the inverse uh, of the metric G2 and the metric G1 is a small. Then we can construct by the same method or solution U2, but we modify the, the principal part. Here we need to add, it, to add some uh, other principal term in order to uh, eliminate some oscillation in the uh, orthogonal identity. Uh, so here I will uh, move quickly to this part. So now assume that we have the constructed solutions. U1 is the solution with respect to the metric G1, which take this form. This is, is the amplitude. This is the phase. This is a small term in L2 norm. U2 is a solution with the, the metric G2. This is, is the principal parts and this is a small term. So by the orthogonal identity, for example, here I will keep it just for the uniqueness. If you have the same partial dirichlet Neumann map, uh, we apply the orthogonal identity, we can obtain this estimate. Here rho is uh, some function uh, which can be expressed with the, the symmetric tensor S. S is uh, G2 minus G1. Can be estimated by lambda minus 1 plus lambda square, the norm of the tensor S, multiply uh, by the norm of the uh, angular part of the amplitude, B0. B0 depends only in the angular variable itself. Uh, so we use the polar coordinates. Then we can transform this integral in this one which uh, estimated by exactly the same the same part uh, sorry okay then the blue uh, the uh, i is okay uh, the, the the green integral which is the time integral is a constant yeah one okay and the blue integral is exactly the X-ray transform of the symmetric tensor T. T is uh, some coefficient multiply the symmetric tensor S. S is G1 minus G2. Then this integral is exactly the integral of the X-ray transform of the tensor T multiplied by B0. B0 is in any arbitrary function which depends only in the vari in, uh, angle variable Xi can be estimated by the same quantity. So B0 is arbitrary. Then here we fix the choice of B0. We fix B0 equal the X-ray transform of the normal operator applied to T. Then we can find this uh, uh, inequality. Then the norm, the norm of uh, the normal operator applied to T in L2 can be estimated by this one. Now we minimize this uh, quantity with respect to lambda. Here we have some balances between lambda. Here is a small, but here large, but t is a small. So we minimize in first time with respect to lambda. We can obtain that the normal operator applied to t in L2 norm can be estimated by epsilon alpha, the norm of t. Uh, power 2 plus alpha for some alpha positive in C2 topology. Uh, and uh, by interpolation, we can keep the norm of uh, sol the solenoidal part of T can be estimated by uh, epsilon mu, the norm of T. Now, if you consider 
the tensor T, uh, symmetric tensor T can be decomposed in solenoidal part and potential part. Uh, so uh, by the special form of T, thanks to the change of coordinates, we can estimate the potential part of uh, the symmetric tensor T by the solenoidal part. Then by this estimate, we can conclude that the norm of the tensor T can be estimated by its solenoidal parts in H2 norm, which itself is estimated by epsilon the norm of T. Of course, this uh, uh, final uh, identity uh, guarantee that T equals zero if you take epsilon small. So if T equals zero, we have S equals zero, but uh, S is just uh, the pullback of the metric G1 minus the pullback of the metric G2, then we can find G1 and G2 are uh, isometric. And we have the, the pullback Psi is uh, Psi2 composed with Psi1 minus one. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Murad. Uh... Is there some uh, questions? I have one, uh, Nabil. Yes, yes. This is Hatem. Can I? Yeah, yes, of yes, course. Yes. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much for this nice uh, uh, talk, uh, uh, Murad. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And in fact, I, I have been interested uh, lately in this uh, metrics with, uh, you know, this wave equations or heat equations with metrics, but I am not successful at all. So I try to learn a little bit about that. And my question, which was raised to me in my uh, uh, tentatives uh, before, uh, so globally in your talk, can we see that you are able to say things when G is very general or only when it is close to, uh, to the RN uh, case? Yes, Euclidean metric, exactly. This is uh, really a general uh, question. Uh, I, I would like to know what is your uh, feeling about that? Okay. Uh, thank you, Hatton, for your question. It's very uh, interesting. Uh, just this uh, problem of uh, yes. determination of Riemannian matrix, it's a very famous uh, problem in uh, inverse problem community. Right. For example, there are many, yeah. many uh, works uh, by uh, Ullmann, Stefanov, okay. and many other people. Uh, so uh, this problem is... Um, uh, Related to other geometrical pro problem, for example, the rigidity problem, yes. which is very geometrical problem. Uh, it is possible to find some uh, to identify uh, the metric just from its geodesical distance. Okay. Of course, uh, as I have mentioned in my talk, this uh, it is uh, uh, it is not true because there are some invariants by, by Jouge. For example, if you consider some gauge transformation, right. we can uh, have uh, the same geodesical distance, but there are no reason that G equals the pullback of the metric. Okay. Then, uh, in terms of the dirichlet hellman map, the two problems is equivalent. Identify the metric from its uh, boundary uh, information or measurements, which given by the dirichlet hellman map, is equivalent to the uh, rigidity problem to identify the metric from the uh, geodesical distance in the boundary. Uh, the, 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 uh, the majority of the, the, the works uh, is about to identify the metric G by the knowledge of the dirichlet tournament map in the old boundary. So we measure the flux of the solution or the normal derivative of the solution in the old boundary. But uh, physically speaking, this is it's, uh, uh, not realistic. For example, we need, okay. we have access only in a small part of the boundary. For I example, see. just gamma sharp. 
For example, for the global, when we know the dirichlet tournament map in the whole boundary or the global data, uh, uh, we can expect more better stability estimate. For example, we can prove some older or Lipschitz stability estimate. This is, is important for the uh, numerical uh, part. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you consider only in small parts uh, for the boundary, uh, we cannot uh, expect the Lipschitz or the older stability. Here we prove a very weak stability estimate, logarithmic stability estimate. But the advantage here is uh, we measure only in a small part of the boundary. Uh, of course, there are other, uh, other problems which uh, connected to this inverse problem. For example, not identify the metric itself, but uh, we can identify some coefficient in the first uh, or the operator in the equation or the other equation, like potential or the magnetic potential or like uh, other uh, coefficient. Yes. Uh, but for the uh, this geometrical problem, it's, uh, there are many geometrical arguments. And uh, for example, which I have uh, mentioned that uh, the problem is equivalent to the, uh, to the injectivity of some X-ray transform, okay. integral transform, this yes. one. This, for example, is uh, connected. If you have uh, just the Euclidean metric, uh, it's connected with the random transform or uh, X-ray okay. transform in RN. And this, for the symmetric tensor, for any symmetric tensor, this uh, transformation, it is not uh, injective. Then we cannot uh, uh, identify S uh, from uh, XGS. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, what's your question? I, <laughs> she be... You know, uh, Murad, I just wanted to know if you are able to, to handle general uh, metrics or only metrics which are somehow close to Euclidean. Metrics. Ah, okay, yes. okay, okay, sorry. Uh, in my case, uh, I need some uh, th th this condition for the smallness condition, or uh, uh, G is close enough to the Euclidean one, uh, yes. just uh, to uh, uh, to solve uh, to construct the diffeomorphism, the change of coordinates. I see. Uh, I need okay. just here just to uh, solve uh, to guarantee a global solution to the Hamiltonian system. Yeah, because otherwise we, we cannot have a global. We solution. can solve, but locally. Locally, Can but you, yes, yeah. sure. But I, uh, yes. this is, is no, I understand. Yeah. Technical points, but I think, uh, uh, for example, happen for yes. example for the uh, when uh, we interest with the global Dirichlet tournament map, yes, uh, we can uh, remove this condition. Then we have more general case with the of global. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For the local Dirichlet tournament map, I I think it's technical. It's just technical uh, assumption, but uh, yeah, I don't uh, without access. I have not uh, removed it without. Uh, okay. Okay. Assumptions. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, I I understand. Yeah. Thank you very much, Murad. Thank you. Belhassan, yes. Can you unmute your uh, microphone? Yes. Belhassan. Ça va Oui. Très bien. Ah, bon, J'imagine que tu ne dois pas être très, très loin. Tu dois être à l'Enit, là, mais en ah, ce moment. Je, non suis chez, je suis chez moi. D'accord. OK. So, uh, uh, excuse me. I was a little bit late, but uh, since I, I didn't see the first slide, Murad, can you please show us the equation? The first? The This system, one? yes. Ah, Where is the system? Okay. Okay, so you have a wave equation, you have a direct data on some part of the boundary. It can be the, no, the whole uh, boundary. Yeah, but the whole boundary? The, the whole boundary, yeah, sigma is the whole boundary. No? Okay. And uh, you know, uh, you, you, you say that you know uh, the, the map uh, F gives uh, uh, normal derivatives. Mm -hmm of the solution. Assume, please, that you have uh, uh, directed data known only on a part of the boundary. 
Ah, this is a question for uh, no, no, here, no, no. F, no. F is, uh, is uh, given in the whole bundle, yeah? F, okay, but it can be supported only on the part of the boundary. Can be, yeah, of course. Ah, yeah, and, this is uh, your equal question. to zero, equal to, to zero uh, uh, on, the, on the rest of the boundary. Okay. And uh, you can also uh, try uh, to observe the normal derivative on this part of the boundary, the, the complement of the support of F, the Dirichlet data. Uh, you know, uh, when you start with initial data, U0, U1, in uh, the energy space H1, L2, all the, uh, all the uh, properties, singularities, uh, compactness of the initial data will uh, go, will propagate to the solution. Mm -hmm. But if you have some uh, singularities or uh, la uh, lack of compactness on the directed data, the most part will not go to the solution. I mean, you will not observe it. Uh, uh, Brahsan, uh, thank you. It's a very interesting remark. Uh, just uh, here, F uh, not necessary with the compact support. But uh, of course, just uh, this problem is very important. For example, in this paper, by using the boundary control method, uh, the authors consider the case when F is compactly supported in a uh, fixed part of the boundary. And uh, we measure in other part of the boundary. That's exactly the case I'm talking about. Yes, for the, exactly unit, the case. for the units is okay, but for the stability with our method here, uh, as I have mentioned, that we need to construct some solution, solution, special solutions. Mm -hmm. The -hmm. problem that is that uh, we have not any control. Uh, okay, on the boundary that. On the boundary. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you have an answer to my question. Okay, it doesn't work because in the case. For I'm the, talking about yeah, for it the doesn't work. Yes, it, it, it doesn't work. You have you, you have uh, examples of solution for which the data uh, uh, can be of norm one in H one of the boundary, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, normal derivatives goes to zero in L two. Okay. So you cannot observe if it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. it, it's not possible. And all the energy is uh, trapped on the glancing and the elliptic uh, parts of the boundary. It doesn't work. Okay. Then here, yeah, if you uh, choose the Dirichlet condition in uh, a fixed uh, sub-boundary part. Exactly. 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 In, in this case, if you if you uh, uh, hope some uh, uh, any result, uh, you can, for instance, uh, consider the sufficient case of a diffractive boundary. I mean, the complement is uh, strictly convex. OK. No. In this case, it, it may work. Mais sinon, ça ne marche pas. Oui. OK. So your solution, the, the solution you construct, I have uh, not any, any is supported everywhere. In the boundary. OK. OK. F in the old boundary. OK. Très bien. Supported in the old boundary. Merci. Uh, Mohamed Ghattasi, you, you are still here? Yes, you can, you can ask your question. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, the nice presentation, Murad. So I would like asking about uh, when I see your uh, proof, I have the intuition that maybe we can extend this uh, this approach for the Boltzmann equation. Uh, for the Boltzmann equation, uh, I, I think there are many parts of uh, this proof can be work. Just for the Boltzmann equation, uh, there are small uh, difficulty to construct uh, the remainder term, the, the, the correction term in the special solution. Mm. Uh, 
just uh, no here. yes here for the wave equation to construct the correction term we have uh, applied the energy estimate for the wave equation uh, unfortunately that we cannot apply the same estimate for the Boltzmann equation but we can prove the correction term is a small uh, go to zero when lambda go to infinity but without any explicit uh, estimate. I think this is uh, just the difficulty for the Boltzmann equation for the, this kind of problem. But I think many parts of this uh, proof can be worked in, uh, in okay. Boltzmann. And, and this difficulty is coming from the unbound of uh, the velocity or uh, more geometric? No, 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 this difficulty just for the, for, from the equation, for the Boltzmann equation uh, is uh, like transport equation. Mm -hmm. Then we have not uh, some energy estimate like this one. Okay. But we, we can prove that the, the, the remainder term, I have already one paper in the Boltzmann equation, but uh, the, the, the correction term, we can prove that just go to zero in, when lambda go to infinity, but without any explicit uh, decay rate with respect lambda. We can prove uniqueness and we can prove uh, stability with the global, uh, global dirichlet Neumann map. In fact, for the Boltzmann equation, there are the inequivalent dirichlet Riemann map is the albedo operator. The corresponding dirichlet Riemann map is called the albedo operator. OK, thank you. I can uh, send you uh, my paper. OK, Boltzmann, okay. thank you. OK, if uh, there is no more questions, uh, perhaps we can stop here. Is there other questions? Okay, thank you, uh, everybody. It's our uh, last uh, webinar this year. There is another one, a junior uh, webinar uh, next week. <laughs> okay, you are welcome. Thank you, thank Nabil, you, and uh, thank you for your... <laughs> <laughs> لا مش مدمتي المدير يا ولدي المدير الجديد هذا ايش فيك؟ انا خويا ما عاد حد شيء انا عاني بعيد هو ما قري انت تو اخويا يتوليك يا مراد نبيل كومون فاتشي والله الحمد لله سافا تو مون فا بيان سافا جو رونتر دوما تو رونتر ا تونيس ان شاء الله وي Ah bah c'est génial, c'est génial, on te verra alors. Inch'Allah, avec beaucoup de plaisir. Oui, oui. Ah oui, il y a bien, il y a ça. Très, très content pour toi, très content pour toi. Merci, c'est une période de confinement. Merci, Mourad, merci pour, pour la conf. Merci, Mourad, merci pour la conf.